In this lecture, we'll see how we can make use of the identity services by creating a register form. And in the next one, we'll also be creating a login form. So using the registration and login, we'll be basically creating user accounts and then using those accounts, we'll be logging into the system. So here, the register page, as you can see, we're making use of tag helpers. And here, the ASP action is a register. And this has been created inside the directory views account register. So obviously, you can see that we are not specifying the name of the controller. It is going to automatically take it based on the directory structure that we have. So register action will be logged into the account controller method, as you can see over here. Now, what we are doing over here, we are just taking email address and password. We're confirming that password and then submitting the same to this action inside the account controller. So here we have the register view model. Now this register view model, if I take you to it, is having email address attribute. Here we are making use of data annotations. It is required email address, maximum length 500 and display name will be email address. Then we have password, data type is password and it is also required. Then we have confirm password where we are comparing the password. This is the password that we are comparing and error messages, passwords must match. Display name for this is confirm password. Now register view model is also placed inside models account register view model. So now we have our register.cshtml page. We have our view model. Let's go to our account controller. So this is the account controller. And here you will notice at line 13, we are making use of user manager identity user. And then we are passing it to the account controller constructor. The best thing is that we don't have to go and do any kind of dependency injection for this because that has already been taken care of. Now, here on the register method, we are doing a HTTP post and we are getting this registration object. First of all, we are identifying whether the registration object that we are receiving is valid or not. If it's valid, then we are proceeding further and we're creating an instance called new user, which has email and username. The result over here you'll notice makes use of await. And the reason why we are making use of await is because we are creating the users using the create async method. Now create async method executes asynchronously. And that is the reason why you are seeing this async task I action result rather than just I action result. So once we have the result, we can check whether it has succeeded or not. And if it has not succeeded, we can add the errors to our model state and then return the view. Otherwise, we can directly take the user to the login page. Obviously, this login page as of now does not exist. So redirecting to this will cause an error. That is why we'll be creating this login page in the next lecture and then we'll execute this whole thing.